Now here we have laid out before us all the parts we need to get started on the Print and Play Arcade. As always, the build materials will be in the video description, and this doesn't represent all of them, but this is some of the important parts. So in terms of printed parts, we have the top of the unit, the bottom of the unit, the control panel, the rear panel, the LCD bezel, and this is the piece that I've designed to hold my volume control as well as my power button and my power jack. In terms of electronics, we have a Sanwa style joystick, we have seven blue buttons and the ball for that joystick. We have the controller for the LCD screen, which is there. We have a power button. We have a power jack with a barrel connector to plug into it. We have an audio amplifier that runs on five volts. Then we have our joystick interface, which is a USB uh, interface and connects to the buttons using these wires. We have an orange Pi with our 16 gig micro SD card. And of course you can go as big or small as you want on those provided as long as it's at least eight gigs. And a piece that I've printed to allow us to glue the control for the screen onto the back of the screen and make it that much neater on the inside. Well, for me, the best place to get started is to put together the control panel. I want to get the control panel into a usable state so that before we finish mounting all the components, we can connect the controller to the orange pie with the screen and make sure everything works together beforehand. So we'll start off with the base of the unit, which we have right here. And we're just going to take two of our buttons and pop them into place. Now we'll repeat that process on the control panel itself. If you printed the version that has the indentations, then make sure they're facing up before you start and just push your buttons into place. Next, it's time to get our joystick mounted. There are four mounting holes for the joystick, which line up with the slots cut in the Sanwa joystick. So to mount our joystick, we'll make sure that the cables are facing in and we will simply slide it through like this. And then you're gonna make sure that you can see through the four screw holes here. Then one at a time, feed a bolt through. Then top that bolt with a washer, a locking washer, and then a nut. But don't tighten it down all the way because at the end of this, you're gonna wanna make sure the joystick is centered before you give it a final tighten. And just repeat that stacking process for all four holes. With all four bolts in place, now it's time to make sure that it is as centered as possible in the middle of the hole. As you can see, that's actually pretty good right where it is, and then just make sure it's straight up and down. Then with your pliers and your screwdriver, go ahead and give them a tighten down until you can't tighten them anymore. With our joystick tightened in, now it's time to top it with the ball and get a first look as to how your control panel is going to look. Well, with everything mounted, it's time to get some cables on these so we can get them connected to the control panel. So you'll notice that on the tabs for the buttons, there's a design on one side. When you take your cables for the buttons, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the slit in the quick disconnect goes over that pattern so it's in the space like that. Otherwise, they can be very difficult to remove if you need to. So repeat that process for all of the buttons, including the ones in the base of the unit. With all of our wires connected, now it's time to connect the wires to the USB interface for the joystick. So we can start off by connecting our five pin cable to the joystick connector here. If you end up with a joystick that doesn't have this five pin connector, instead has two connectors for each direction, you can actually use these ones and connect it through that instead. In terms of the orders of the buttons, it doesn't really matter because you're going to be mapping it in software at the end, so connect them how you like. Now 
Now you can go ahead and put the control panel inside and make sure everything fits up just so. And there we have the first part of the bottom assembly completed. At this point we have a functional game controller that if connected to a computer or an Orange Pi or a Raspberry Pi or whatever will function as a, a, as a gamepad. So. Well, before we go any further, we should probably make sure that everything works together. We don't want to get the entire thing built and only then have to take it apart. So go ahead and lay your control panel flat. And then we'll go ahead and get our USB cable that came with it. And we'll go ahead and plug it into the interface here. There's a single four pin connector right there and our four pin cable. That is just a standard USB out. You are going to have a fair amount of excess cable on this. You can shorten it. It's pretty simple to remove a section then splice it together. But there is going to be room in the top of the unit for you to be able to stuff extra cables and stuff like that where they won't be too much trouble at all. So it's up to you if you want to put in the effort. With our control panel plugged in, we can go ahead and bring over our orange pie. Make sure that you've got your SD card inserted into the bottom of it, like so. Take your USB cable, plug it into one of the USB ports, it doesn't matter which. Then we need to get our screen up and running, so we'll take our controller board and you'll flip this panel here into the up position. Then feed the ribbon cable gently, you don't want to damage or fold this too much. Just feed it into the slot, push down and it's locked in place. Of course, you'll need to be able to power that screen, and this screen comes with a 5 volt USB cable, so we're going to go ahead and plug the power in, and then also connect that to the Orange Pi. Of course, that takes care of the power for the screen, but it doesn't get us video, so you'll need an HDMI cable. You're going to want the shortest one you can find. Uh, I've put a 1 foot one in the parts list, which should be adequate for our needs. We'll go ahead and connect that up like that. So now we have our controller and our screen plugged in. So we should be able to get this powered, get something on the screen and then be able to control it. Now this is going to be missing stuff like audio so we won't have a full sense for it, but at least we know it uh, can work. You can see the screen came on, went blue, that's a good sign. And hopefully in just a moment, we get the Retro Orange Pi splash screen. Now the first time you boot it, this one has been booted before, but the first time you boot it, it will do an installation screen and that takes five to 10 minutes. Then it reboots and it goes in and it will ask you to configure your controller. You can see here, we have full control. So we should be in pretty good shape. You should be able to get this working no problem. And that'll wrap up part one. Make sure to tune into part two next week. In part two, we will be doing the wiring, the soldering for the audio amplifier, and getting the case finally assembled. So if you found this video helpful, toss me a thumbs up to let me know. If you're new here, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell so you're notified when I put out new content. If you have any questions or comments, toss them in the comments below. And until next time, stay creative.